on 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. But this is the city where I was born and raised, and this is the town that taught me that Americans can do anything when they want to. So no matter our differences, when we work together, there is nothing that we cannot achieve. President Trump yesterday during his speech at Madison Square Garden, an astounding moment here, eight days before the election. It's Larry O'Connor with Julie Gunlock. And Julie, we're now joined by that man's daughter-in-law and the co-chair of the Republican National Committee. And I uh, say that man's daughter-in-law, and I did it in that order, Laura Trump, because I saw you, you. You looked like you were so proud of this man, given everything that he has been through and everything that they have thrown at him, to be able to carry off that astounding achievement at Madison Square Garden here. Uh, just on a personal level, reflect on what this means to the Trump family as you hit this final Final lap here in the home stretch for the election. Oh, thank you, Larry. Well, good morning. Um, listen, it is, it's never been about politics for our family. And, you know, we were never a political family, of course, before the famous escalator ride in 2015. <laughs> Donald Trump came down in Trump Tower and announced he was running for president. Um, and, you know, after all they have put this man through directly and all of our family through, this is it's it's got a different level for all of us. Um, I think that the Make America Great Again movement, I think my husband said it on stage last night when we were speaking. This is a, a family overall with the American people. And you feel the love out there. You feel the support. And I have always said that I feel like when history reflects back on Donald Trump, he will go down as one of the greatest presidents this country has ever had. Um, and I truly believe that. And I think his best achievements lie ahead of him. And so I, I, it is, it's incredible to see yeah. Madison Square Garden packed to the gills, 20,000 people. The energy in there is unlike anything I've ever experienced. And I've been to a lot of Rangers games, a lot of uh, basketball games in there. It was, it was absolutely <laughs> incredible. So uh, now put on your chair of the RNC hat, because if I had the chair of the RNC eight days before Election Day, I would ask them this question. What are you most concerned about right now? What needs to get done that you're sort of looking at for hot spots? And most importantly, with regard to control of ballots and election integrity and poll watchers, what's the the, uh, National Committee doing in terms of mobilization there? Well, I say my my biggest fear is that we get complacent, that we feel like we've Mm -hmm. got it in the bag and that people stop going out to vote. I got to be really clear with everybody listening. Make sure you get out and vote. Listen. I was in Virginia with your governor, Glenn Youngkin, on Saturday, and there's a reason we showed up there. It's because we really feel like we can win Virginia. And I feel like that about a lot of states, but it doesn't happen if people start getting relaxed and don't go out and vote. And I think the numbers have been great so far. The early vote numbers have been historic for Republicans. Um, but you're, you're right to ask me about our election integrity efforts because I think this has been a big player in this election cycle. You know, when I became co-chair alongside Michael Watley, our chairman, we said, all right, how are we going to win this election? We've got to do two things, and I think those are the only two things the Republican Party should focus on, which is getting out the vote and protecting the ballot. And so we put together the most aggressive uh, election integrity operation that this country has ever seen. And we put a lofty goal ahead of ourselves of 100,000 people to be poll watchers, poll workers, and legal experts. We said, we'll put it out there, and we hope that people come and and want to be part of this team. We have trained 230,000 people as of about 10 days ago, which is absolutely amazing. We're, We're watching every time a vote is cast and counted. We have people in the room, eyes on it. We've identified already multiple different issues um you know you probably heard in lancaster county about a week ago there was a question yeah. about some voter registration there were 2500 fake voter uh, registration applications yeah. and our team identified that so my whole point is the plan we have put in place is working but none of it matters if people stay home get out and vote Hmm. Laura, I, I'm wondering if you can comment on this issue. It certainly has national implications, but it is a local issue. Um, Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin, who you said you were just with, he he issued an executive order in August directing state officials to remove non-citizens from voter rolls. On Sunday, a judge uh, upheld a lower court ruling to reinstate those voters. The governor has now vowed to fight that all the way to the Supreme Court. Can you give us your thoughts on this and and, and if you think this will be successful? 
Yeah, well, uh, Governor Youngkin and I actually chatted about this directly on Saturday. And, you know, it, Julie, it's, it's outrageous. We as Americans should only yep. have American citizens voting in yep. our elections. And by the way, that's not just a, a, a small minority of, of people who think that. That is a majority of Americans. And that mm-hmm. is also our law, our federal law states that. So the idea that you have anybody willing to, you know, go above that and say, oh, no, no, no we're going to reinstate people who are not citizens, it, it really tells you only one thing. These people want folks who are not American citizens yep. to illegally vote in our, our elections. So, look, I think that... Um, It's very disappointing when we've seen these sort of of things happen across this country. But I can tell you that uh, Governor Youngkin is very strong on his position on this. I do believe that if necessary, he'll take it to the Supreme Court. And I will say the Supreme Court has actually been very favorable in ruling in terms of only Americans being uh, able to vote in our elections. We had a situation in Arizona where they were not checking uh, citizenship verification when they were registering folks to vote. The RNC sued them we took it actually to the supreme court the supreme court agreed with us and they had to actually change and make sure that they were uh, ensuring folks were american citizens when they were registering so i think Jeez. it's outrageous i think it's a shame but i think that it's all the more reason that if you're a person listening right now who says i don't know if my vote's yes. gonna matter maybe i stay home get out and vote your vote is the one that is going to make sure that donald trump becomes the 47th president that we uh, keep our uh, majority in the house and that we take back the senate this election Laura Trump, we look forward to speaking with you after the election and in the years to come, because this is uh, excitement right now that we're all feeling and sensing, but staying focused on this election. Eight days out, it's going to be one for the ages. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks, Laura. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it.